Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are going to be making a different kind of rocket propellant. So, <laughs> real quick, as the saying goes, if you build it, they shall come. And holy shit, have you guys been doing a lot of coming lately. Uh, <laughs> past couple days, channel's been doing over 300 subscribers a day, which is like, just mind-blowing, you know? I, I never expected to gain this kind of following. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but just wanted to thank you guys. As you can see, got a new blender after the uh, little little bit of downfall we had last time. <laughs> Went to the thrift shop, grabbed this for a couple bucks, and this will be our, our new bad boy. So what we're going to be doing today is making uh, KNSB rocket propellant. So it's a sorbital base as opposed to the usual uh, sugar base rocket. So I'm sure you guys have heard of sugar, uh, you know, recrystallized rocketry, R candy they call it, rocket candy. And it's based on, you know, your obvious uh, potassium based oxygen and then sucrose, table sugar. What we're doing is a little different. This is actually a much safer, lower temperature way of making a rocket propellant because you use sorbitol. And you can see here, I got my big thing of sorbitol from harrynuts.com. <laughs> uh, not sure what else they sell, but I got, grabbed a uh, lifetime supply of sorbitol and it was pretty cheap. I don't know exactly what it was. It was a while ago I bought it. But sorbitol is really nice. It's actually a sugar alcohol. If you eat it, it'll basically make you have an intestinal exorcism. You'll be, you know, having one hell of a time on the shitter but it has an extremely low melting point and a similar caloric index to sucrose. It's not quite as energetic. Of course, in the body, I don't think it's digested. It's, since it's a sugar alcohol, it passes through and causes all kinds of havoc on your intestines. But our potassium-based oxygen is able to digest this and turn it into energy, whereas the human body can't, doesn't know what to do with it, so it just passes through and makes you fart a lot. But <laughs> what we're going to do is uh, grind our potassium-based oxygen into a fine powder, uh, mix it with sorbitol in the proper proportions, a little bit of red iron oxide to act as a burn rate catalyst, and we'll have rocket propellant. I have my old uh, little rocket set that I machined on my lathe years ago, and some craft paper tubing, very, very thick wall. This stuff is excellent for making rocket engines. So... With all this in hand, you know, got my uh, nozzle mix, which is uh, mostly bentonite, about half grog, and then some paraffin melted into it just to make it a little more stable. It uh, It's less prone to absorbing moisture and, and it retains its shape better. So let's get started. So just to get started here, your uh, potassium-based oxygen has to be pretty well powdered, and mine is in granular form, so I'm just going to powder some in the blendini here. Hopefully this thing works pretty good. Oh, some leftover herpes in there. Beautiful. Alright. Been about long enough. Hopefully she's pretty well powdered at this point. Oh yeah, she's air float. Stay away. Chucking on a respirator because, you know, the lungs don't need potassium. Whoa, near disaster. So, pretty darn well powdered. Not quite powdered sugar level, but it's it's pretty close. I'm happy with that. Goodbye for two bucks. Can't beat that. Get ready for a tough life, little guy. It ain't gonna be easy. Last one didn't make it out. All right, so we got our potassium-based oxygen, and now we just gotta weigh out our reactants, and we'll have some rocket propellant. So I'm just doing a, a reasonably small batch here. T your typical ratio is 65 parts potassium-based oxygen <laughs> to 35 parts sorbitol, and an additional two parts of red iron oxide if you want it to burn a little bit faster. So I'm only doing a half batch, so I'm gonna use uh, 32.5 grams. Close enough. Perfect. 
All right, we are good to melt this stuff. Now, the beautiful thing about this propellant is it has a much lower melting temperature than your standard rocket candy, which makes it much safer. You're not anywhere near the auto ignition point. Uh, this stuff melts at about 250 Fahrenheit, which that much lower temperature keeps it that much further from its auto ignition point, which makes it a much safer propellant to work with. What I'm going to do first, before we actually go ahead and mix our uh, propellant up, I'm going to get a rocket tube ready for casting. So, got my little old fixture here that I made on the lathe. It's going to set the tube on there and get some nozzle mix in there. And I probably shouldn't do this on the uh, the griddle, the girdle. And you can see here, uh, this creates a conical nozzle shape. And give that a good whack. Right, that is right at the line. And we should have a perfectly formed nozzle. If I can spin it off of there. Yeah, there you go. Pretty nice. Looks nicer than the shit Estes uses, that's for sure. And now we are good to mix our propellant and what we'll do is just cast that right into the tube. Little pressure on the back with this jobby and we'll have a rocket engine. So I'm just gonna add all the components to a cup. Get them intermixitated real quick. We're gonna do a lot of mixing while it's molten too so it's not super critical to get your mix perfect here. It's good enough. Just trying to break up some of the bigger chunks of sorbitol. Just a quick word to the wise here. Anytime you're working with propellant, face shield is an absolute requirement. Don't, don't do anything without one. All right, so we're nicely acclimated right around 250. So, Add the propellant on here now, and you can see the stuff in contact with the plate just pretty much immediately melts. Alright, so at this point I'm going to try loading it in to the engine casing. So it's easier to wait till it gets to a kind of kneadable consistency to load it, like what you see here. Kind of roll it into balls, push it in load your engine that way made a little too much <laughs> I should make another engine but it's pretty late and I'm feeling kinda lazy there we go that's see that is a lot easier to load you just make it nice and cylindrical yeah that is a nice workable propellant I, I should have waited a little bit to load it so I could uh kind of prematurely shape it but it's a super super user friendly now our candy one would be melting your fingers away <laughs> and two it would probably already be hard as a rock whereas this stuff it takes a while to set up which is the beautiful part of it yeah right now it's at that perfect consistency where you could just roll out a string of it and drop it in your engine ram it down Got to give it a good ramming. It's pretty nice stuff though. I definitely prefer working with this. Just don't eat it. <laughs> You'll be shitting your brains out. <laughs> if, if you ever get a spare minute at work, go on Amazon and read the uh, Haribo, I'm probably butchering that name, the sugar-free gummy bears. My God, the stories on there. You'll be You'll be pissing yourself laughing. People have been through some torture because of sorbitol. And it's uh <laughs> it's a great page to read. The reviews. So I'll actually keep this as like a little test rod so you guys can see how it burns. Looks like a nice little we'll call it the test turd. Beautiful little test turd there we got. Gorgeous. So I'm just going to load some of our nozzle mix in there. And there we go. Finished rocket motor. Now this wouldn't be the type you load in an Estes model rocket. This is literally just an up and then it turns into a lawn dart. Because you have no ejection charge here. If you were doing an ejection charge, 
you would basically have a little hole through this uh, bulkhead and then you would have a, a little bit of delay mix in there so typically a black powder with a little bit of uh, baking soda added to slow the burn rate and then up here you would just have some granulated black powder and maybe some tissue paper or something to hold it in place that would act as your ejection charge so the motor burns delay and then and you get your ejection charge but this this will be a sweet little lawn dart so we got a rocket and well a rocket engine we now need to turn it into a rocket unfortunately my last remaining <laughs> model rocket happened to fly off into never never land so i just grab a stick and i'm sure there's some math behind uh you know getting a properly sized stick but i always just look at my stick and say it generally looks okay you know my wife doesn't complain about it i don't complain about it it's good a little electrical tape and there we go we got a nice little rocket now of course it, it looks like a bottle rocket but this will have no pop at the end it's just a lawn dart red white and blue visco fuse because fucking America that's why shove a little aluminum foil in there and there we go we got a rocket <laughs> it is a uh, brutally cold outside it's a nor'easter right now but <laughs> I really kind of want to go test it it's been a while since I've shot a uh, sorbital rocket off well it's a beautiful balmy night here in the northeast but uh we're gonna give this a shot anyway so let's see I'm gonna back up So last night I totally had a brutal case of the uh, rectal cranium syndrome and forgot to core the propellant. So you can see here, this little core is designed for very fast burning black powder engines. So that willow black powder we made previously, that's what I use that for. I forgot to then shove the engine on here to put a proper core in the propellant grain. And uh, basically that's why we failed to get lift off and it just sat there like a a North Korean missile on the launch pad not doing much it is just getting to that perfect consistency now beauty look at that that's the beautiful part about this propellant it just it works so easy she's on there all right so we got that there we go now we should have proper liftoff don't have it quite perfectly co-centric, but I think that'll be okay. Now the spare slugs of propellant, you can actually, you can keep these and you can reheat them. You just got to keep them in a, in a bag with desiccant because they will absorb moisture like crazy. Let's make up for last night's shit show. Beautiful. Wow, that got up there. <laughs> now that is a man who can plan his trajectories <laughs> always landing it in the right spot <laughs> all right guys hope you enjoyed hopefully you learned something uh hopefully you have at this point figured out what the magical potassium based oxygen really is <laughs> please don't forget to thumbs up subscribe click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can actually get notified when i post because youtube kind of hates me <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you like what we're doing on the channel and you want to help support these videos, uh, you know, they do cost a good bit to put together. So any support is truly appreciated. I have a Patreon page set up somewhere up here and uh, you guys can go there and help support the channel. Thank you so much to my current patrons who are helping me fund these videos. You guys absolutely are the best. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. Wow. like a NASA booster. <laughs> Holy crap. What is this? Oh yeah, it's trying to take off. <laughs> Holy crap.
<laughs> that was that was more fun than the rocket anyway.